Hi everyone, it's Kyla Epstein from Sumerk & Associates. After a few month hiatus, I have now my baby boy Mika. I am back with another episode of Working Moms. I have Tina Sobe joining me today from Bowtree. Uh, thank you so much. Would you be able to tell the viewers a bit about Bowtree? Sure. So Bowtree is uh, I think we're 12, we're going on our 12th year of being in business and um, so really we have two very important pillars that we focus in on which is really supporting organizations in optimizing their process so if you think about um, how do you get your service or product to the market in the most cost effective and efficient way, uh, we do lots of work around that and really as you think about process you can think about you can have the most perfect process, um, very consistent and laid out, but you have to have people who have to operate against the process. So we do a significant amount of work in the uh, people optimization. So lots of training and really bringing out the inherent potential of your team. And how did you get started in, in that? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I'm not really sure, to be quite honest. Uh, I left my corporate job the first time in 2008, 2009, so if you, I don't know, age-wise, you maybe don't remember how bad it was in 08, 09, but we were in um, the first recession that I can remember in my lifetime, um, and that is when I left my corporate career, which was really great timing, um, and I did what everybody does when they don't know what they want to do, they become a consultant. I did a little bit of work. Um, in the healthcare space at the time, because that's where I was coming from. I realized very quickly I was not um, as good as I thought I was, because uh, I came from the corporate world, so I was really surrounded by amazing people. Um, but I was young and didn't know that all those people actually contributed to my success <laughs> until I was on my own. And then um, I actually went back into industry and, and moonlit for seven years. Um, doing that and starting a not-for-profit and um, and working my uh, corporate job. So. And so where, when did the kiddos fit in there? Oh. So my first, so I have three, I have three children. Um, the eldest is just turned 17 and so she was, man oh man, like I know what year she was born <laughs> in, but uh, she was with basically my first corporate job. Okay. So I have a really interesting career uh, story. So I started my career actually in the Canadian Armed Forces as an infantry soldier and um, I don't know, I couldn't <laughs> do it today. And then I got very interested in the medic um, sort of field of the army. So I did a little bit of, you know, sort of dabbled in it a bit. Um, I got to take a sniper program, so that was super cool. I, I left the army, I went back to school and became a registered nurse. And I spent uh, a very small amount of time in um, critical care as an ICU nurse. And uh, I won't get into it on camera, but basically, politically, I'm not a very good politicker, <laughs> if that is a word. So I ended up leaving bedside nursing and I actually went into um, the private industry as a nurse at a medical equipment manufacturing company. And so when I went there, um, I was there as a nurse and uh, very quickly I realized that nursing was probably not going to be my lifelong career, that uh, I really liked making money. <laughs> And um, not that you can't make money in nursing, but just a different way. And I was really interested in like business development. So I was really fortunate. I worked at a company that was super small, um, just sort of emerging into the Canadian market. And they didn't know what to do with me, so they just kind of let me do whatever I wanted. And um, so that's kind of how my, my career kind of had its, its takeoff. And while that was kind of taking off was when I had my first baby. In 08, 09, when I left, and I was like trying to figure out what I wanted to do when I grew up, and I went back into industry, I ended up getting uh, pregnant like not even a year after working at this new company, which was really interesting because I hid it for a long time. I wore a lot of baggy clothes because <laughs> I was so like worried. And then 
I left that company like, I don't know, five years later, went to another company and um, got, I didn't get pregnant right away there, but <laughs> had my sort of third all while moonlighting this folk tree business. So that's where the kids came in. They came in at each of the corporate careers. It's kind of fun that you can place each one. Like, yes, <laughs> at each company. Yes. So then I guess you didn't have a tradition, did you have a traditional mat leave each time, like the full year? No, so the other, I mean, maybe slightly unique, uh, I think it's becoming more common now, but my husband, uh, right from the beginning, uh, decided that he would be the lead parent. Um, so you can imagine that making some of the decisions that I've made have been very interesting because we never had the financial security of somebody else. Um, you know, and I had to build the babies, throw the babies in my belly and then have them. Yeah. So the first, the first not leave, um, I only took just shy of five months um, because it was a small company and I mean, I don't know how political you want to get in these conversations, but the reality is, is that they say that, you know, you'll, you're, you're your position will be secure. Oh, totally. It's um, it's probably not quite as uh, smooth as they say. So I went back very quickly uh, to make sure that I could secure my position. With that, like people need to hear that because I think people who are in it are like, "Am I? This isn't normal." But oh like, yeah, like it's, it is. <laughs> it's very normal, and I think it's really, really difficult on women because even though, you know, I'm sure if my boss at the time was listening to this, she probably would say that wasn't the case at all. But I was an N of one in my role. So it wasn't, and back then, um, we didn't get the year off. So it was, I think it was seven or eight months. And so it was near impossible to hire people for maternity leave. Like it just didn't really Makes happen. Sense. Yeah. So yeah, it was, and did the company make me? Absolutely not. Um, but I could tell you lots of things that happened in that process that made it very obvious that I needed to come back. The second baby, uh, they went up to a year. Um, and fortunately, unfortunately, that child was very, very ill um, right from birth. So um, I really didn't have much of a choice. She was too sick for me to go back um, within, the, within the year. So I did, I did keep my state off the whole year for her, which taught me a lot about a year that is not near as long as you think it is when you're when you're living it and so for the third I just was like life's too short I'm for sure taking the, the year yeah it definitely was difficult but I was you have to remember I was moonlighting this other business so it was I had a lot more flexibility from a cash flow standpoint so and you also hit on a good point just with like you learn a lot in a year like I know with my first Harper I learned I didn't want to stay at home any longer yes. than a year yes <laughs> and that daycare or you see I have so much credit and love them so much just because that's just not I can't do that yep like you know what you love to work and you want to contribute and use your brain and just like in a different capacity yeah and so that was a big thing for me I think in the last <laughs> speak to us about how you balance like that's a lot of what you're doing kids sports arts music yeah, so, I mean, I don't think there is any such thing as balance, to be really honest. I think that you you deal with what's in front of you at the time, and you get through it somehow, some way. Um, I think it's uh, particularly difficult for women. Um, I don't know whether we're born with extra guilt genes or stress genes or whatever, but um, I think, so for the earlier years of my eldest daughter, and a little, and and well, I mean, maybe half the of my life, or half of my, I didn't even give the ages. There's 17, there's 12, or yes, yeah, 12 and eight is, so they're all four years apart. Um, and so a little, most of my 12 year old's life as well, I was so busy that I was never home. So I was gone minimum two weeks a month. And then when I was home, I really wasn't home. Like mentally, I think I was just, like on cruise control and why I this is gonna get to the balance thing but why I quit my super stable well-paying corporate job was because I had this day where all three kids were in the back seat 
and I was driving, I can't tell you where I was driving, and they were laughing hysterically in the back seat, like just, and having so much fun. And I pulled over at the side of the road and I lost my mind on them. And, uh, and I remember going home that night, like bawling my eyes out saying, this is, this cannot be life. Cause I just like, the noise of them was so difficult for me to like, like they were having fun and I was just like at the max of my, I just couldn't do the three things that I was doing anymore, plus be a parent and be wife and friend and all those other things. So I think that that was probably the hardest, one of the hardest decisions I ever made in my life because I was leaving something super stable and secure um, because I knew I couldn't do everything, but the corporate job wasn't fulfilling me enough as a person to make what in everyone else's mind was the right decision. What you're saying is just so like, it's like goosebumps, like, because that was literally me when I left corporate to go to real estate. You know, like it's a huge gamble. What are you doing? Everyone has an opinion on it. Like you have a salary, benefits, pension. Yeah. And I was like, I couldn't do it. It wasn't fulfilling. Yeah. Like that spark. Yeah, it's, uh, and I mean, everyone thought I was having a midlife crisis because I did uh, make that decision to go solely on my own. Um, just turned 47, so I think, uh, lots of, so <laughs> six, uh, <laughs> <No>. thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, so I was in my early 40s when I made the decision to just do it, uh, you know, and, and as a woman, you know, as soon as you get closer to your 50s, you seem less desirable for some reason in corporate space as well. Um, somehow men seem to just become more knowledgeable and desirable the older they get uh, in corporate, but I think women, um, unfortunately, and I know that just because I, I, I used to run like a big team, so I used to do a lot of recruitment and, and you know, HR and stuff, how old are they, and you're trying to guess on their resumes, and so I think it was, I had to make the decision to be um, intentional in what I wanted the end of my life to look like, not you get wrapped up in, in a lot of things that really at the end of the day don't matter. So true. Yeah. Not, it was not easy. I will not say it was, has been easy, um, but I would say that now I'm more in control, even though, you know, like I'm not in control financially, it seems like often, like it feels like it, but I'm in control of like, when I say, I'm, you know, I'm not going to work in evenings, I very seldom do because I made that choice. I'm not, you know, waiting for a boss to call me and give me a deadline. You know, and not yeah. that there's anything wrong with that, but yeah, but just, it was just very intentional. Like, yeah. What is something if you could write a letter to your younger self? What is something you would say? Oh my gosh, it'd be very long. I think there's a few. There's lots of things. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything either. So like, I wouldn't change a decision that I've made. Um, I probably would have traveled more when I was younger, because um, once you have a family, it's like very, very <laughs> difficult. Um, although we do lots of travel as a family, um, now it's they're older. it's just not. No, we did it. Oh, right, good. Right okay. at like that that okay. age. Yes. You can hear because something is up. <laughs> we did. Uh, we actually went to Italy for six weeks when the the littlest was just born. Um, oh, Eric would be so weeks. happy. <laughs> yes. Uh, again, it was a big gamble because <laughs> I was the only one not making money yet again. Um, but uh, I think I think the biggest thing is doing what you love. Like, no matter what, even though everyone's going to tell you to give you an opinion about what you're doing. Um, but I think if you do what you love, you will always find a way to make money. Yeah. Like you'll... It, it, you know, you make hundreds of thousands of dollars, you live the lifestyle of a hundreds of thousands of dollars lifestyle. Um, you live a life of living, you live, you know, like it comes with a different price tag, but it's... It's so true about how, like, are women just born with more guilt, right? Like, because I, in another episode, I talked about that mom guilt, and I had a very hard time adjusting, because... Like, this isn't fair to say for all men, but like a number of men can be <laughs> like in a different way, right? Like where they just, 
And I don't think it's like conscious, it's just the way men are built, right? Like Adam and Eve, whatever, like Adam got something different than Eve and <laughs> yeah. we're all like doomed. But I kind of feel like, you know, the, and I see on Instagram, like the invisible load of motherhood, you know, everything that we have to do, like changing out kids' clothes, like when they go from zero to six months, six to 12 months, and now even with their, them being older, like how do you ignore that guilt? Or can you, do we? I, I don't think you can, Okay, because to be quite honest. I think that you have to manage it in a way that, um, that I think that it's, a, I don't know, this is a very personal, like, yeah. uh, belief. So, I mean, I, I know lots, many people might not agree with me. But I think that when you have children, it's walk the walk, talk the talk, right? So I think that... When I really start to feel guilty, I have to think about how do I want their life to be? And do I want, you know, do I want my two girls to grow up having that same element of guilt? And I don't know that it's necessarily that we're born with extra guilt genes or whether it's just been history. You hear women all the time, like women who in a million years I would have never expected to say it. It's like, oh, so I gotta, you know, I can't go out tonight. Let me go talk to my husband to see if he'll take care of the kids. In what world are we living in? And it, and you know what? I mean, yes, my situation was different, so I think that my husband would have a very different conversation. <laughs> um, but but even though I had this really supportive husband who you know did change the clothes out from zero to six and six to twelve, and and uh, you know does the laundry and uh, you know keeps the house tidy, not clean but tidy. <laughs> um, I still don't think that he feels the same way that I do. And I told, and I, um, I hear you for there because I have a very supportive partner. A lot of my girlfriends, their husbands yeah. are great as well. Like, you know, I'll go down to my parents' house and my dad's like, where's your baby? I'm like, with their dad. He yeah. is also capable. You know, it's just different times. Like, my mom had to look after us more because just my dad was working, right? Yeah. Where now it's like... I want to be that for my kids. Like, where's mom? Oh, she's hustling. You know, like, yes. I want them to know that it's okay that both mom and dad work and in different ways. Like, and I think that was a big reason of me leaving the corporate world. Like, I was like, bound at nine to five, you know, like there was no, but then you also work, like you said at night, I was working, answering emails at eight o'clock. Yeah. But that's not healthy. And do you work everything else? Yeah, yes, right? totally. And when you're working for the man, like when you're working for yourself, I'll go out there and I'll work. Yeah, you know? like, exactly. But I can also start at like say 11 because I can get the kids off or ready to, for school when that happens and then go and do what I need to do. Yeah. So it is true. Like I just think even though men can help so much now, you just still have that. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't think it ever goes away. Um, I just. But it's, I think it's just managing it yourself where yeah. you where you take the time um, to feed your own soul and, and I think that's vitally important. Um, I don't know that I've mastered it, but I definitely, but I'm conscious of it, right? So I don't have, you know, like right now, my littlest kids have are away for three weeks with, with dad, uh, which is amazing. Um, but the guilt of knowing that I was working and I wasn't going to be able to go with them and all that stuff. Um, I mean, I, I spent a couple of days crying because I felt so guilty that I wasn't going with them. Um, and uh, But now they're having the best time of their life. And they're making memories and, and those are memories they'll carry with their dad forever. Yeah. They've got other memories, right? So. Exactly, and it's not like there's like a memory bank that fills up. No, it's, it's very exponential. True. Like you yeah. can go on all the trips and make the time. So, who would you say inspires you in what you do and how you do it? Oh, that is a very difficult question because I did look at that one and I was like, I get asked that quite a bit. I don't know that I have one particular person. Um, I will say that uh, my grandmother, my mom's mom. Um, who was so traditional, like we're talking, she was a Roman Catholic, Roman Irish Catholic, you know, had 13 kids, yes, <laughs> um, I mean, I would say she probably would be my biggest inspiration because back then, you know, it was very uncommon for women to work, 
Um, she had 13 children. She worked at a nursing home. Um, she, you know, there was very seldom nights where there wouldn't be somebody knocking on the door in the middle of the night uh, who was um, of addiction. And so my grandma used to take them in uh, with my grandfather and cook for them and try to sober them up. Um, so I would say that if I really had to think about a person, a person, probably she was, she's the one who kind of always in the back of my head keeps me, you know, um, being a good, kind person in the world and and never giving up. Like she just, she was a machine. Like she, she, she worked a farm. <laughs> she, she was just a machine. Thirteen kids. Yeah. yeah. Twins? Any of them? None. What? Uh, single <laughs> oh babies. What a woman. Yes. And her last one was at forty-five or forty-seven, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't believe in birth control. <laughs> You use might it. want to yeah. No, I was going to say, use it. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you birth control. Yeah. I always joke, I would have a ton of kids if I knew they'd all sleep well yes. through the night and I could bounce back quickly. Exactly. <laughs> I love hearing your story because when you had your first, you were 30. Yes. As was I, so I feel like this is a very nice, like, yes. seeing you, what you do, it's really great inspiration for me. And you are very inspiring even oh. hearing. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's just... You love seeing women like you like what I did Bachelor of Commerce in school and like I just get this like vibe from you that you're a lot like the friends I mm. kind of gravitated to because we all wanted all we talked about was being like CEOs of companies CMOs and at that time I was like I don't think I can have kids because I want to be so high up in a company and men can but can women yeah thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of working moms uh, stay tuned for more episodes coming soon. Thank you.